So far, all of the views that we've written in this Django application are function-based views, as you can see on VS Code. For example, here we have a function in Python called index, and we have another one called detail, and so on. So the views in your Django application at the moment, they are function-based views, but in Django you can actually write class-based views as well, and we're going to look at that in this video. So let's get right into that. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page we've got just below the video, and thank you to everyone who's contributed to that. And I also want to mention the results of the polls that I posted on YouTube. So the original poll, we're going to create a Django tenant video based on the suggestions. That will be coming up in October. And for the other one, we have the winner here being Asynchronous Django. So we're going to look at Async Django later on. So those are two videos that will be coming up on the channel very soon. And thank you to everyone that voted. So the idea is we can take the function based views we've written and we can actually write these as classes using object oriented programming. And Django provides something called generic views that we can use, with the philosophy here being that less code is better. Now one thing to note here is that the decision between function based and class based views is something that can be down to preference. For me personally I prefer function based views just because often the logic is clearer and there's less magic involved. However, if you work with Django, you also will work with class-based views as well, especially if you use something like REST Framework. And I'm not against them, I like them as well, and they can be useful in certain use cases. So we're going to look at them in this video, and as it says here, some of the views that we have are very short, and they are functions in the application. We're going to look at converting these to class-based views, and we're going to look at the benefit that that gives you. Now the idea of a class-based view is to encapsulate common patterns in web development. For example, you typically want to get data from a database according to some parameter, for example, that's passed in the URL, which we've seen in this series, and then you want to load an HTML template and return that rendered template to the user. And Django provides these generic views as a shortcut for that process, and they abstract common patterns to the point where you don't even need to write Python code to write an application. So for example, we have a list view, we have a detail view. These are generic views provided by Django. We're going to look at them in this video. So there's three things we're going to do. We're going to convert the URL configuration to point to a class instead of a function. And then we're going to delete the old views and replace them with generic views from Django. And let's start now with the URL configuration. Now this gives you an updated URL conf. I'm going to do this one view at a time. So let's take this one here, the very first URL pattern. And you can see it's referring to something called index view and then it's calling a static function called as view on that index view. So we're going to copy that and let's go back to VS Code and let's go to our applications urls.py file and we have this path at the top that was loading views.index. Now this is a function as we can see here in Python. We're going to replace this with the line that we copied and now we are referring to index view and then we're calling that static as view function. Everything else in the path stays the same, but we're now going to refer to a class-based view instead of a function. So we need to go to views.py and we're going to write that class-based view now. So let's comment out the index view. And what we're going to do just above the code that we've commented out is define a class called index view here. And that's going to be a subclass of something we're going to import from Django. And that's a generic view. Let's go to the documentation. And from Django.views, that module has a generic module that we can use. So let's import that at the top here. And then we can subclass one of the generic views here to write our own index view. We're going to do that. And if we look at the documentation, we can see that it is a list view. So let's copy this and we're going to go back here and we can paste that in. So we are extending Django's native list view and we're writing our own index view. And what do we actually do within the class? So if we go to the documentation, we can see a few things are defined, a few fields on the class. For example, it's pointing to a template using the template name field. And we also have a context object name. And that's going to refer to the list of objects that we get back from the database in this list view. In the template, we can refer to that using this context object name. So I'm going to copy all this code and we will dive into this in greater detail. And let's paste this in here and we can see it in VS Code. And let's do a comparison here of what we have in the class to what we had before in the function. Now the template that we're returning, you can see here before we were using the render method and we returned polls slash index.html. We're doing exactly the same in the index view, except it's now a field on the class. We just have a template name field and we can refer to the template we want for this given view. And we also have a get query set method. This is a method on a class and we're overriding the get query set method that's built into the list view. And what we can do is provide our own query set here. And that's going to represent the list of objects that are returned from the database for this list view. 
Now generic views in Django are very tightly coupled to the database and they need to know about the Django model or the query set on which they should be operating. And that is what you can provide here using get query set. So you can override that method and you can return the query set of objects. Now the question here is, is it still going to work now that we've added this index view? So let's save views.py and I'm going to open the terminal here and we're going to run Django's web server and we're going to go to the browser. And when we go to the list page here for each question, you can see both of the questions are still here and everything is still working. But what we've now done is we've moved the logic to a class based view and we've defined the fields that we need on that view and also the get query set method that tells Django's list view what query set should actually be fetched from the database and placed into this context object name. And if we go to the index.html template, you can see we are referring to a context object called latest question list. And that is what this is referring to here. Now you will note that there is some magic involved here. This query set, for example, is fetched and automatically added as context using this name here. That is less explicit in my opinion than the method we had before using the function, but that is some of the magic that's built into class-based views in Django. So the key takeaway here is that what you want to return and what you want to actually display in terms of query sets and templates can be declared as fields on the class or using methods here if you want to do something dynamic for example you can do that and that is how class based views work let's now move on to the detail view i'm going to remove this index view that we commented out and now we can look at the detail view this was very simple it took a question id in the url and then it fetched that question from the database based on that id and then returned the polls slash detail dot html template adding the question as context now this is a common pattern, we can see almost exactly the same code below, just a different template. And this scenario where you're fetching an individual object based on a URL parameter, that's another very common web scenario. And Django provides a detail view class, that's another generic class that you can use for this purpose. So if we go to urls.py, here we had the reference to views.detail. We are going to replace that as we did above using a detail view here that we're going to call detail view. And again, because that's a class, you need to use this static as view function to basically convert that class into a callable Python function. Not something you need to worry about this. You just need to do that in your URL configuration. So let's go back here and define that class based view. So we're going to call the class detail view. And if I can spell that correctly, what we're going to inherit from this time is generic dot detail view, which works slightly differently from list view. So instead of fetching a query set of objects from the database, it's going to fetch an individual object based on a URL parameter. Typically that's an ID or a slug field. Now we also need to tell the detail view which model or query set we are working with. In this case, it's a model and it's going to be the question model. And that's because if we look at the detail function that we had before, what we're doing is we're fetching a question from the database based on that ID. So we need to provide the model here and set that to question. And what we can also do, as we did above, is set the template name for the response. And we're going to copy this here and we're going to paste that in. So again, we're returning the same template, but we're now consolidating some of that logic into a class-based view. And we can remove the detail view that we had before. So you can see that's very simple and very clean. We define a detail view and it inherits from Django's detail view here. And we tell Django that the model we want to fetch is the question model. And we want to return this template. But we don't actually define how the question is fetched here. So there is some magic going on again. Django is able to fetch the question because detail views, they work based on URL parameters. For example, here we have the question ID being passed into the URL. Now there is a problem though. Django expects this to be called something different. It doesn't expect question ID. It expects it to be called primary key if we're fetching the primary key from the database. So let's change the name to PK of this URL parameter and we can go back to our polls application and let's try and fetch this detail view and you can see that it's still working. Now if we go back here and change this back to question ID, if we then go back to the page and refresh the page, we get this exception. And this tells us that generic detail views in Django must be called with either an object primary key or a slug in the URL configuration. So what we've done here is we've defined a URL parameter called question ID but we need to have one called PK if we want to use the ID field on the model. Now, what if you want to actually use something different? For example, question ID, maybe you have multiple PK parameters in a URL, for example, you can actually define the field name on this detail view. So there's another field we can use to configure the detail view, and that's the PK URL quark, 
we can set that to question ID, which matches what we had inside the URL patterns. So now we've got question ID, and if we go back to this page here, it should hopefully now work when we ref refresh the page, and you can see that it does now load. So again, it's configurable. We can configure these parameters here using fields on the class-based view. And because our logic is very similar for the results page, what we can do is just copy this, and we can paste it below here, and we're going to call this result view. And again, it's going to inherit from Django's detail view. All we need to change is the template name here and refer to results.html. And we can remove the results view here. And again, once we've done that, we can go back to urls.py. And we need to refer to this view here. So we're going to do that using views.results view. And we're calling the as view function as before. And I've called this results view. So we need to go back to views.py and make sure that matches. So let's change that to results view. And now that we've changed that up, we can go back to the application. And if we vote for one of these, we get the results page, as you can see in the URL. And that is still working as before. And we're now using this generic view. And you can see the similarity in the logic here. Both of these need to fetch something from the database based on that question ID parameter in the URL. And then they simply fetch that and return a template that has that context built in. And by context built in, I probably should explain that better. The question that is actually fetched from the database is then used and available in that context inside the template that you specify here. So for example, if we go to results.html, you can see we have a question available in the context based on what we've provided here in this class-based view. So that magic happens again under the hood. And once you get used to these patterns, it can save you writing some code in Django by using class-based and generic views. And some people much prefer this method of writing view functionality. One final thing I want to note is that the actual template variable here called question, that is available in the context because of the model that we are using in this detail view. Django automatically determines the context object name to be question. So it lower cases the Q here and just gives you a question that's available in the context. Again, if you want to change that, you can change context object name and you can set that to whatever you want the question object to be in the context. And when we use context object name in a list view, that referred to the object available in the context that was a query set because, of course, this is a list, not a detail page. When it's a detail page, you can override context object name and that gives you the actual model that's been fetched based on the URL parameter. Now, in my experience, you need to get used to class-based views. You need to mess around with them a little bit before some of this makes sense. It's a little bit more magic than it is with functions where you just write the code you actually need. Under the hood with class-based views, there's a lot of magic going on. And that is very useful when you understand the patterns, but it does involve a little bit of work up front to understand what those patterns are. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to move on and look at automated testing inside Django applications. So we've written this functionality so far in the polls application, but we've not written any tests. And tests are very useful for software engineers and web developers to actually make sure the functionality is working as expected and that it doesn't break when you introduce changes later on. Tests give you a kind of safety net against some of that. We're going to dive into that in the next video. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll leave a link to this playlist just below so you can view the previous and future videos if you want to. And finally, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link in the comments as well. Thanks very much to everyone who's supported the channel and also became a member. Greatly appreciated. And we'll see you soon in the next video.